Father, we're thankful for this day. We're thankful for it. just to be able to start this week with your house and fellowship with your people. We're thankful, Lord, for the good days and the good life and the good times we have because of you. And we're thankful, Father, for our country. We're thankful for the military men and women that throughout the world that have their life on the line in many places, Lord, just so we can have the freedoms that we enjoy and to be able to worship you in spirit and in truth. And we know there's a, there's a price paid for this. And we, we just offer up our gratitude, Lord, and, and thanks at this time and our praise to you that we're able to do this. We're thankful, Father, for our, our youth of our church, and uh, we lift them up in prayer this morning as they begin a new year in school, and some in college, and we pray for the parents as they uh, send their children out into the world, and we pray that, that we would just put our trust and our faith in you, knowing that, that you're in control and that you're in charge, and we're, we're so thankful for the the uh, youth of our church that uh, stands for you and we pray that you would go with them through this this coming year and give them the uh, the wisdom they need Lord to make wise choices to uh, uh, to uh, resist the uh, temptations and the peer pressures that they will face and that you will guide their every thoughts and help them to make good decisions, and so we just lift them up and, and pray that you can walk with them throughout this year. We pray for the message this morning, that you would uh, guide uh, the speaker's thoughts and to put into his mind the things that we need to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning. That was probably again though. Good morning. Good morning. Aren't you excited to be in the Lord's house? Amen. How exciting it is to open up God's Word and be able to look at uh, what He has for you today, what He has for me, as we open up uh, His Word and jump off into it and uh, see where He wants to uh, make a move in your life, change something, adjust something, maybe your focus, something along those ways. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Brandon Hanson. I grew up in Brick City, Texas been in the ministry for about 25 years now, and uh, I met David Turner about, uh, I guess about 18 years ago, and I haven't seen him in the last 12 at least. He looks good. <laughs> what an honor and privilege it is to be here this morning and to be able to bring the word. Uh, what a wonderful weekend with a wonderful bunch of students. Um, I have to just tell you, I have to brag, I guess, on your youth ministry, your church, and uh, your, your uh, uh, youth minister as well. My son and I, uh, I have two boys, and my wife is the music director at Little Cypress High School, but my boys and I have been over at Silver Oaks Baptist Church doing an interim student ministry. Well, we finished up just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, my oldest son, Luke, who is 16, uh, I asked him, I said, where are you going to go to church on Wednesday nights? Because we, uh, I pastor a small church. We don't have church on Wednesday nights because a lot of our senior adults don't want to drive in the uh, late evening, and I don't blame you, it gets harder. But uh, I asked him, where does he want to go? And I thought, of all the churches in Southeast Texas, where do you want to go? And he chose Little Cypress Baptist Church on Wednesday nights. What a privilege and an honor to save y'all. He said, I love it. He said, I love being here. I love the youth ministry. It reminds me of our church in Georgia, our youth ministry there, and the fact that y'all love them kids don't do this for me. So what a privilege and honor for him to say, I want to be a part of y'all on Wednesday nights while we do not have any. And so, thank you for being uh, ministering to the students. Thank you for this weekend. They have studied about what it means to be fools for Christ. And, uh, of course, I had an intricate part of being able to speak to them each uh, over the course of the weekend three times. And we talked about uh, having an identity in Christ. And what does that really mean? First of all, they had to learn and know that they are a chosen people, a chosen generation by God. Secondly, we talked about also that they are the temple of God. That God uh, allowed Jesus to come here and be on earth 
And then he left to go uh, be with the Heavenly Father in heaven. And he left the Holy Spirit here. And the Holy Spirit dwells in us. And we are the temple of God. And then the third thing, last night we studied and realized and understood that we are complete in Christ. That we have everything necessary, all the tools that we have are with us because we have the Holy Spirit. And this morning, we are now going to speak about setting our hearts on the things above. You see, we live in this temporal world, but yet so often we set our minds and hearts' affection on the things of this world. And all along, God is calling us to set our minds on things that are of Him. Well, Martin Luther once challenged one of his students by saying, I'll get you a new horse and carriage if you can pray the Lord's Prayer and consecrate on every phase without losing your train of thought. Well, the young man thought, no problem, I, I can do that. That certainly would be easy. After he had prayed the prayer, he however confessed to Luther, all I could think about was the horse and carriage you had promised me. As much as he tried to concentrate on the Lord's Prayer, his mind was drawn elsewhere. Have you ever had a time in your life where you couldn't get something out of your mind? A song? A negative incident that happened? A big game and a big event? Or an interview? Those things have a tendency to hang around. Those are things of this earth. You know, it can be tough when we get our minds stuck on things that are consuming our energy, our time, and they're exhausting us. And a lot of times we allow things in this world to, to do that. I know in my life, whenever I have uh, something that happens negative, it may take me a week or two to get that out of my mind. <laughs> Well, if our minds do get stuck on something, it usually is something we'd rather not be thinking about or shouldn't be thinking about. And we need to, re to refocus ourselves on the things of our Lord. You see, God desires our mind's attention to be on Him and His things. Today we find people are more concerned about the world than they are about souls or even their own souls. People are giving God very little time or place in their daily lives and are more concerned about pleasing themselves than they are about what God has for them. In other words, we're setting our hearts on temporal things, earthly things, rather than setting our hearts on the things above. So if you have your Bibles, you open up to Colossians chapter 3. You're going to look in there and see what it says. When we seek Christ, we will find Him and begin to see our need for Him. When we seek Christ and His things, we'll begin to see our need for Him and His desires. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3, it will be our text that we'll start with, but it has several other scriptures that, that uh, we'll be going through as well. So this is here in Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. It says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. You know, there's three things right here in the Scripture to pick up on. First thing is, we have been raised with Christ. Those of us who have chosen Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, those of us who have trusted Him, who have said it is no longer about our desires, it's no longer about what we necessarily want, it's about what He has for us, we have been raised with Christ. The second thing in this text, real quick, to pick up on, is that set our minds on things above. Paul here is telling us to set our, thing, our mind on things that, that are not of this earth. But so often we set our minds on getting the next job that has more money. Set our minds on the things of having a bigger or larger house. We set our mind on the things of, of having our kids play sports and rise in the sport world. 
That is setting our mind on things here. And God is saying, set our mind on things above. And the third thing is, is that you have died. Your life is hidden with Christ. It's no longer about your life. Your life is really dead. You live in Christ and Christ alone. When you live in Christ and Christ alone, you're able to set your mind on the things above. After all, Matthew 6.33, which we probably often quote, says, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek first the kingdom of God. <coughs> Why is it that as humans we continue to seek the things that are not of God? We don't seek His kingdom first. Do we get up in the mornings and, and open up our Bibles and get on our knees and pray? Is that the first thing that we do? Or do we begin to think of our busy schedule that we have for the day? Tomorrow morning as you get up in the morning, so many of you will be uh, furiously running around the house trying to get your kids ready for school. I encourage you to stop for a moment. Put your focus where it belongs, back on the cross. Start them out this year with a word of prayer before you leave so that they can have their mind on the things above. Well, we are to be in this world, not of the world. We've heard that term so often. John 17, verses 14 through 16 says this, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world. Just as I am not of the world, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not. We're to be in the world, not of the world. We're here. We have to deal with this, this place that we live. We're to be in it, but not of it. We can live here, but not take, take part of well, the, the, the things that Satan wants you to take. In Sunday school this morning, as I was teaching the lesson just down the road at the church that I pastor, the Amish came up. Somehow they managed to be in the world, but not be of the world. Now, I'm not saying we should live like Amish. Because if you uh, leave the Amish religion, they ostracize you, kick you out completely. But we do need to look at those who are not setting their mind on the things about those who are not living for Jesus. And we need to lovingly, caringly, bring them back into the fold and point them, help them to refocus their minds back on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We are to be in the world, but not of the world. The scripture is referring to the protection from Satan and all the wicked forces following him. Yes, Jesus' sacrifice on the cross defeated Satan. But here's the problem. He is still alive and he is still loose, running rampant in this old world, looking to devour us. John 14, 6 says, I am. The thief comes, I'm sorry, not John 10, 10 says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy, but I have come to give you life and give it to you more about it. The thief is out to destroy your spiritual walk, your spiritual life. If he can destroy that, then he is eliminating you from being effective. If he can get your focus off of the things above, he can redirect you on things of this world. He is eliminating you from being effective. And if He can destroy your spiritual life, listen, He will destroy you physically. In 22 years of student ministry, I've seen this over and over in students. But it's not just happening in our students. It's happening in our adults. Their focus is being redirected to the things of this world. And they are walking away from Christ by the drugs. We are, our churches are not growing, they're shrinking. And the ones that are growing are usually because smaller churches are, are closing and they're having to find churches and they're getting into larger churches. We have become ineffective as a church. We have become ineffective as a generation of Christ.